Our next section is Process Management and Information Technology. And the module next in line is Process Management. What do we have in this module? Introduction to Business Process Management, Shared Services, Outsourcing and Offshore Operations, Selecting and Implementing Improvement Initiatives, Business Process Reengineering, and finally, Management Philosophies and Techniques for Performance Management. Let us first start with Introduction to Business Process Management. Business process management basically it's a management approach that focuses on customer satisfaction. When you say customer, it does not mean the external customer. Customers can be internal departments within the same organization. So customer satisfaction, whether the customers are internal or external. Business process management attempts to improve processes continuously. Just like the concept you might have studied in... Uh, in your earlier studies, Kaizen, that's a Japanese approach, continuous pursuit of improvement. So, business process management seeks to pro improve processes continuously. This makes organizations more, more sensitive to what the customers are looking for. Business process management activities are grouped into five categories. Uh, let us discuss these categories one by one. First is design. Design involves uh, identifying your current processes. And then, how these processes should function once we improve on them. Then the next is modeling. Let us assume you are now setting up a new manufacturing process. Modeling would involve creating a conceptual design and uh, answering many what ifs. What if our efficiency is to be raised to 90% or let's say if our throughput time is to be reduced by 20%. So, many what-if analysis would be conducted by changing different variables. Once modeling stage is over, the next stage would be to bringing those changes into action. Bringing that conceptual model into a workable form. At this point, at execution stage, we will identify many uh, key success indicators, key indicators of success to what extent have we been able to succeed. Have we been able to reduce our throughput time have we been able to increase our efficiency? Have we been able to reduce our wastage? And then finally, the last stage, uh, the second last stage is monitoring. Monitoring means uh, gathering the information and comparing what was expected. To what extent have we been able to achieve our success? And finally, optimization means the data obtained from monitoring and comparing it with what the original plan was. The process manager can continuously refine the process further. Next, what are the techniques? The general techniques or approaches to process management. Let us discuss few techniques here. Define. Define involves establishing a baseline. Maybe your existing original process could be a baseline for, for current process functioning. And we would like to improve upon the current process. Next, measure. Measures are the indicators that will show a change to the process means reduction in our throughput time or increase customer satisfaction. So, we establish measures to determine to what extent have we been able to succeed. Then, analyze. Analyze involves uh, different modeling techniques, different simulations to determine uh, what the target and optimal improvement uh, we are expecting. And once, once we have determined the target and optimal improvement, we select few and implement them. Improvements are selected and implemented. And finally, the last part is control. Control means monitor the improvement in real time and apply the data to the model for improvements. It's a cyclical process. It's a cyclical process. There will be many uh, iterations. You keep on making improvement as you go along. So, after identification of uh, problems at the control stage, you may go back again and then this process goes on and on for the purpose of continuous improvement. Then, next technique we have is PCDA. PCDA stands for planning, doing, checking and acting. So, plan means design the plan process improvement. Do means implement the actual action, the implementation of the process improvement. Finally, check that is monitor the process improvement. Did it work? And finally, act. Act means continuously commit to the process and reassess the degree of improvement. Then you may have to go back again and again. It's a cyclical process that will result in refinement as we go along. An illustration on PDCA breaks only company 
manufactures car brakes for each of the big three U.S. automakers. Over the past uh, several years, there has been an increase in the return of new brake systems by these automakers due primarily to the failure to meet all required design specifications. So, this is the problem, increase in the return of new brake systems, return inwards. In order to reverse this negative trend, the head of production at BOC has implemented the PDCA approach at the company. In the first quarter of the operating year, he designed a plan, plan to ensure that all brake specifications are carefully reviewed prior to the production and shipment process as well as to improve the communication among internal departments through enhanced internal reporting. Okay, this was the first part. During the second quarter, the product manager implemented the process at the company to improve product quality. At the end of each next two operating quarters, the production manager monitored, that is checked the effectiveness of process by comparing year-to-date break returns to the prior year. Monitoring how did the process go. And then lastly, this process continued the following operating year with BOC achieving a 10% reduction in the brake system returns over an 18 months period. To further reduce the number of brakes returns, the production manager hired a full-time quality control manager. As a part of ongoing responsibilities, the quality control manager will continue to monitor, act the effectiveness of process and recommend any technological improvement to the pro production manager. Remember, it's a cyclical process, many iterations and you keep on improving every cycle. Then we have certain measures, certain uh, process metrics, some tools, financial and non-financial that we can use, uh, compare with our expectations to monitor progress to what extent have we been able to succeed. Gross revenue, it's a tool appropriate for sales driven organization. Then we have customer contacts, customer contacts can be used in sales driven organization again. Then we have customer satisfaction, another measure. We can uh, use uh, the customer survey, the return rates. So, organization using relationship marketing techniques may consider customer satisfaction measures and uh, operational statistics. They might involve reduction in throughput times, reduction in delivery times uh, and other logistical measures. Business process management will also result in some benefits for us like efficiency means we will use fewer resources to accomplish organizational objectives. Effectiveness means uh, objectives are accomplished with greater predictability. We are more likely to achieve our objectives. And lastly, agility. Agility means how quick you are uh, in responding. Responses to changes are faster and more reliable. Next sub-module we have is shared services, outsourcing and uh, offshore operations. Let me first tell you what shared services are. Let's say you have a bank and it is... Uh, split into a national bank scattered across all the cities, all the provinces. So, there are let us say four regions A, B, C, D, large regions. Each region has its own human resource department, own IT department, own legal department. This is quite a lot of cost for every, every division, every region. So, why do not we just combine uh, a centralized HR, centralized IT and centralized legal services that will reduce a lot of cost. So, we can share HR cost across these four regions in the country, right? So, we can just reduce the cost by eliminating these repetitive or redundant services. We can combine them at a corporate level, the cost could be reduced. Let me, let me explain this idea through an illustration. Financial Group Incorporated is a financial services company with three distinct business including accounting, tax, outs, consulting. These are the three distinct businesses and currently each division operates as a separate company with its own human resources, its own payroll, its own legal department. In order to more effectively manage the organization and reduce cost, the new CEO implements a shared services plan whereby all HR, payroll, and legal department services will be consolidated, combined into a centralized function. The CEO thinks that this shared service approach will eliminate a redundant back office function, repetitive, same HR in every division is a more cost. So, we can just combine them, consolidate them, it will reduce annual operating cost by $750,000. That is what you mean by shared services. 
So agreed, shared services can uh, create efficiencies, but there are certain certain issues, certain problems that we must be aware of. First, service flow disruption. Service flow disruption means since now the services are centralized, shared, it might increase the time it takes to deliver a service. Right? First, it was the service was immediately available in your region. Now you have to wait for the center's response. And finally, the failure demand. Failure demand means a task need to be uh, performed second time because it was done incorrectly first time. Maybe our centralized services were not able to deliver, so we are asking for the same service again. Then the next uh, area in this sub module is outsourcing. Outsourcing means uh, contracting services to external provider. Maybe we can outsource our accounting work, maybe we can outsource our legal work to some third party business process uh, organizations, we can outsource our maybe transaction processing system. So many, many areas which are non-core can be outsourced, can be uh, performed by some external providers. Normally internal audit function in large organizations it outsource. So yes, we can achieve efficiencies, but there are certain risks of outsourcing that we must be aware of. First, quality risk. Since you are outsourcing a product or service, quality is not in your control. The service provider, the external provider might compromise on quality. Again, quality of service means poorly designed service agreements may restrict the quality of service. Productivity, not in your control. Someone else is doing your job, so productivity is not in your control. Then staff turnover. When you outsource your uh, accounting work, legal work, maybe your payroll work to some external provider, your experienced staff, the valued staff member, they may no longer be required, so you may have to make them redundant. That's a problem. Start over. More people believe. Language skills, yes. When services are outsourced, uh, if they go offshore, like many uh, US banks, they have their call centers located in China and in India, so there could be a language problem. Anyone who calls in the US to, to the call center, the call are routed to India and China. So those in India and China, they are not as fluent as those living in the US in English, mostly. Qualification of outsourcers. The, the external providers, maybe their, their credentials might be flawed. So this is also an important point to consider. And labor insecurity. Yes, this is also a concern when the, when the local jobs are outsourced to third country this would mean there is more insecurity in your country. Next, offshore operations we just discussed a little while ago. Offshore means outsourcing of service to an external party in a different country, just like call centers located in India and China. So what are the specific uh, domains that are outsourced? IT, information technology, business process, call center accounting operation, tax compliance, software and research and development, and uh, knowledge processes. That means processes requiring advanced knowledge and specialized skill sets like uh, reading x-rays or reading some complex medical uh, examination report from patients. So that completes your sub module. Next we have uh, selecting and implementing improvement initiatives. Broadly uh, improvement initiatives can be irrational or rational. <laughs> when you say irrational, it means simply using gu your gut feeling, your intuitive approach of problem solving, maybe using your emotional approach or just maybe following what is the fashion going on or trend. So this approach may not be very effective. Maybe it can work in the short term, but not a long term solution to your process improvement needs. Rational method clearly is more structured, more systematic, and it follows some, some sensible approach, I would say. First, strategic gap analysis. Uh, gap analysis involves external assessment, opportunities, threats, internal assessment, strength, weaknesses, and then identifying what strategic gap exists and what we need to do. Competitive priorities, that is uh, reviewing the prices, quality, and other consideration in the environment you are operating. Review production objectives, that is review of uh, performance requirements in our production processes. Choose improvement programs, selecting between different alternatives and deciding how we can proceed with improvements. Next, implementing improvement initiatives. There are several crucial features of successful implementation of activities. First, internal leadership. Top leadership, those who call the, the shots at the top, they are the one 
their commitment is essential for success of any uh, process improvement initiative. So, so internal leadership means senior management must be committed, they must provide direction and must provide resources for the implementation process to take place. Inspection. Inspection means a regular ongoing review and monitoring of the processes that have been implemented. Executive support again, executive management must be committed, must be supportive of any uh, improvement initiative that we are going to take. Uh, then internal process ownership. Yes, this is very crucial, very important. Those individuals for whom the process improvement initiatives are being taken, the departments, different departments in production process, they must be committed. They must be committed. They must get involved into this process improvement initiative. They take ownership of the change. If they resist, this whole uh, improvement initiative might collapse, might fail. Next, we have uh, business process re-engineering. Business process re-engineering involves destruction of an already constructed building and then starting from ground zero. Simple. Process re-engineering is a fundamental rethinking. It's a radical change to improve our service, cut cost or operations to enhance competitiveness. Could be very risky. So, uh, basically, business process re-engineering is a radical fundamental revolution, doing things in a totally different way. Previously, we discussed business process management that was uh, incremental improvement. Show yes, show yes. Step by step, you keep on improving things. Improvement is cons considered as a continuous process. Keep on improving processes step by step, bit by bit. That is business process management. But when you say business process re-engineering, it's a radical change. We reassess how business is done from very beginning. Business process re-engineering concept was uh, introduced in uh, mid 1990s. As I said, it's a very risky approach. Business process management is an incremental approach which has less risk. But BPR, very risky. Things can go wrong, very wrong. So it is quite uh, a risky approach. Things can go totally opposite to what we are expecting. So what we see BPR right now, it is not very popular now because it is very risky. Things can go totally opposite to what originally en envisaged. Let us understand this concept through an illustration. Decorations incorporated manufactures holiday ornaments and decorative lawn figurines. Over the past several years, rising manufacturing costs have significantly eroded the company's operating profit margins. Currently, the automated manufacturing process and manual labor process represent 30 and 70 percent of the total production cost, which means uh, our manual labor is a major part of our cost buildup and uh, automated cost only is 30 percent. That is the fixed overhead related to machinery, like depreciation of machinery, insurance of plant and machinery, repair and maintenance, electricity consumption, so on. In order to combat this uh, negative operating trend, company management hired an outside consulting firm that will consider both business process management and business process re-engineering, incremental approach, radical change. After performing due diligence, the consultants recommended a business process management plan that involved cutting 10% of the production workforce over the next three years and replacing 15% of the manual production process with newly designed machines. After severance and machine upgrade costs, it is estimated that uh, the business process management program will reduce annual operating cost by $1 million in three years. The consulting firm also completed a business process re-engineering study that would eliminate 80% of the current production workforce over the next. This is a dangerous and risky approach. 80% workforce. This first part is BPM, the business process management incremental step-by-step -step approach, gradual improvement. This is a fundamental rethinking, radical change. 80% workers laid off over the next three years and fully automate the production process with the exception of the quality control function and the packaging supervision. Although the upfront cost to implement the business process re-engineering program are more significant than BPM, the BPR plan is expected to reduce annual operating cost by 2.5 million in three years. Higher risk, higher is the expected benefit in the form of lowered cost. The consulting firm submits both plans to the company management who must decide whether incremental change under BPM or radical change under BPR. So they have to decide which is more appropriate given the upfront costs to execute the plans and the expected annual cost savings associated with each plan. So I leave it up to you people to decide which 
improvement technique you are going to follow. Uh, the last sub-module in process management is management philosophies and techniques for performance management. First, just in time. As the term itself suggests, just in time management means using your resources, deploying your resources just in time to meet the needs of your customer or to meet the needs of your productions. There are many benefits to just in time. The first benefit is better link production with demand. Your production is according to the demand. You start your production when the customer is standing at the door. So your production is demand driven, not in anticipation of demand. Now, this is a is a pull system. Your production starts when the when there is a customer order, when the customer is standing at the door. There is another system called MRP push system in which we just produce goods in case. That is called just in case. We produce just in case if the customer comes, we have the goods with us. But in just in time, you produce only when there are customers waiting for the goods. Improved coordination. Yes, that is true. More interaction with your suppliers. Uh, you request them only what you need at the particular moment in time. Efficient flow of goods between warehouses and production. You move goods around only when they are needed. Reduce setup time. It takes less time to reset the machinery to produce good A or B or C. And finally, more workers efficiency. Workers are multi-skilled. They can take on many different tasks simultaneously. That would mean more efficiency of, uh, of your productive resources through multi-skilled talented employees. Next tool we have is total quality management. Total quality management means uh, commitment to customer focused performance. And it further assumes that uh, quality and conscious improvement are essential for better customer satisfaction. It identifies seven critical factors which we are going to discuss one by one. First is customer focus. Customers can be internal, mean with different departments within your organization or different components of your value chain or they can be external means your customer so customer focus that is the first critical factor then constant improvements or should we call it continuous improvement quality is not just the goal of production department quality is the responsibility of every person every department within the organization so that is the the foundation of continuous improvement quality is made responsibility of everyone within the organization worker involvement worker involvement means workers follow a team approach workers input to process development and improvement is essential for improving production processes top management support yes management must demonstrate that they support this initiative of quality improvement management must, must actively demonstrate that they are into the loop in quality improvement program. Objective measures, yes. They must be clearly defined measures of performance. What is expected of whom? Then timely recognition. If someone performs well, compensate them more. Recognize their services. So timely recognition in the form of higher compensation and recognition of the work well done. Ongoing training means the workers would be regularly trained so as to make them more effective and efficient in their work. Then we have quality audits and gap analysis. Quality audit means uh, management assesses the quality practices of the organization and it will reveal two things. The strengths and weaknesses identified within the organization and, uh, and a strategic quality improvement plan that identifies the improvement steps that will produce the greatest return to the organization in the short term as well as in the long term. Then we have gap analysis. Gap analysis uh, at least determines the difference between what the industry is doing and what we are doing. The difference between industry best practices and the current practices of our organization. We will identify certain areas for improvement and then we, uh, we benchmark the industry best practices with our processes and see where the performances can be improved. Next tool we have is lean manufacturing. Lean manufacturing uh, basically involves a production methodology that will focus only using those resources that are required to meet the requirements of the customer. It involves waste reduction and efficiency. It involves a Japanese concept Kaizen. Kaizen is a Japanese term that means continuous improvement. 
improvement is assumed to be a gradual step by step process rather than taking one off big jump keep on improving your processes bit by bit that's called kaizen and then process improvement using activity based management we have done abc earlier activity based costing so combining abc and activity based management we can improve our processes we can uh, reduce our cost those costs which are non value adding not providing any benefit to for the customer eliminate them like material handling scheduling warehousing these costs are non value adding eliminate them focus only on those costs that add customer value that is the objective of lean manufacturing next tool we have is demand flow what is demand flow demand flow means customer demand is used as a basis for resource allocation we will allocate our resources based upon the customer demand basically sale forecast or master uh, production scheduling what is its relation to just in time it introduces a concept of kanban system this is what we study in detail in cma kanban system means the workflow how the production uh, process will take place how the material move from one floor to another so as to speed up production process and uh, reduce the idle time we don't want to go into detail so just in time and kanban they move side to side by side A relationship to lean demand flow focuses on waste reduction maximizing efficiency and waste reduction so that's how it's linked with with lean production then we have a very interesting concept called theory of constraint this idea was proposed by an israeli physicist alija goldrat he wrote a novel and uh, he was basically a physicist and he brought this idea how we can manage constraint in production systems let us discuss this let's assume this is your production system and these individuals represent different departments and they move in this way this is the department first then the output is moved to the second department third fourth fifth and sixth let's say now what we see here these individuals are marching forward because this guy tiny guy here is smallest one the slowest one because of him the production system will slow down if these three departments move faster forward we will have a lot of unfinished work and this little guy here is causing constraint in our production system we want to not to get rid of him we want to do something in the short run in the long let us discuss in detail what what constraints are so theory of constraints means certain constrictions certain bottlenecks that are causing our production system to slow down constraints can be internal like this young man here equipment may be inefficient or faulty maybe people lack the necessary skills or maybe some departments have few number of workers so they cannot uh, produce more than a certain limit there could be external constraints also maybe you can't sell more than a certain limit in the market there are five steps in managing the constraint we will just give an overview otherwise it is discussed in much more detail in uh, your management accounting courses first we identify the constraint this guy is is the constraint this is the one causing the marching process to slow down or the production system to slow down first step is to identify the constraint then second step is to exploit the constraint by using the approach called the drum buffer rope approach what we do we keep on this uh, we keep this guy busy all the time by giving him certain minimum stock to work for this is called buffer keep this constraint busy all the time then restrict the forward processes so that no, they don't rush forward and there is so much unfinished work constrain them restrict them to slow down their production give this gentleman certain work so that he keeps on moving all the time and this drum basically identifies the constraint drum means uh, the beat with which the production process marches forward so this guy here represents the drum the constraint keep him busy all the time by giving him the buffer certain stock work unfinished work that he should keep on working all the time and restricting your departments the the production department that they don't rush forward so as to result in a very large uh, amount of work in process so identify constraint exploit constraint subordinate everything else to the above elevate the constraint you can't stretch this guy to become larger maybe remove him and put someone who is able to to march forward faster and once you have uh, resolve this problem someone else will emerge as a constraint so this process needs to be regularly updated because once you remove one constraint another constraint constraint will pop up so this process requires regular revision next we have six sigma what is six sigma six sigma is a continuous quality improvement program 
that requires specialized training. Six Sigma basically is used for, for, uh, for quick rigorous performance evaluation for achievement of our goals. Uh, this program expands on the, the previously discussed model PDCA, that is Plan, Do, Check, Act. We have just discussed earlier a little while ago. Now, let us see in detail. Now, if you have your existing product or process for improvement, so we have this short mnemonic DMAIC. D here stands for define the problem based on customer comments, based upon failed project goals or other issues. Determine what is the problem. Second M stands for Measure key aspect of uh, current processes. Collect relevant data for our analysis. Then we have A, that is analyze data. Examine the relationship between different data elements to identify what is causing the problem. Then next is I. I stands for improve or optimize current process. Use certain models, certain techniques and data to determine how the process can be improved, how it can be optimized. And the last C, control. Control here means develop a statistical control process so that we can monitor the results of our production system. Then if you want to uh, go for a new product or process improvement, we have DMADV, a little change in the original version. Here D stands for define design goal. Design goals that are consistent with the customer demand. Then M here stands for measure C2 key, C2 means critical to quality issues. Analyze the value chain to determine the features that provide value to the customer and the production capabilities that we currently have available in our company. Next, we have A, analyze design alternatives. You need to develop different methodologies to produce uh, new products. Finally, design optimization, D, use modeling techniques we discussed a little uh, while ago to determine optimization of your proposed process. And finally, V stands for verify the design implement and test the plan whether it works and that completes your module m1 process management